Hi, Chem 1212. This is a tutorial to help you predict the products of acid-base reactions. And it all starts with the idea that we have uh, species that can act both like an acid or a base. For example, here's water acting like a base when it reacts with hydrochloric acid, and here's water reacting like an acid when it reacts with ammonia. However, we can even see that sometimes water will act like both, in this example with the autoionization of water. So what we'd like to be able to do is, if a, if a species can do both of these, we'd like to know which way it's going to behave when it's in a particular reaction. So the, an example of a, a set of reactions you might see and want to be able to predict are given right here, and, and we'll come back to these later. So if you notice we have, uh, it looks like a bunch of acids here all reacting. The question is, which one's going to behave like an acid? Which one's going to behave like a base under the circumstances? So the key to all this is knowing the, the magnitude or the size of your equilibrium constant, Ka or Kb. The key point is that a strong acid dissociates nearly 100%, and therefore it makes a lot of the hydronium ion, and therefore has a very large equilibrium constant. On the other hand, weak acids, they barely dissociate, they produce very little products, meaning very little of the hydronium ion, and have small equilibrium constants. All you have to remember then is that a large Ka means it's a stronger acid when comparing to uh, acids. And if we we're doing this for bases, it would be the, the magnitude of the Kb or the base equilibrium constant. So to answer the question of which will act like which when we get these things into solution and we're reacting them, just remember with the two species, the stronger acid will act like an acid while the weaker acid will act like a base. So we compare the equilibrium constants if we have them, uh, and we can easily make that determination if we have the equilibrium constants. However, we may not have them, and therefore we would have to use um, the acid structure to compare the relative acid strength, and we'll leave that for a different tutorial. Today we'll use the, for this tutorial, we'll use the, the actual equilibrium constants to make our decision. So here's an example. Suppose I have some made up acid HXO and another one HYO2, and you're given the equilibrium constants. One's 0.44 and the other one is 6.8 times 10 to the minus third right here. When we look at this and we have a reaction between these two species, we can, we can see that it's obvious that the HXO with this large 0.44 equilibrium constant is the stronger of the two acids. Therefore, it will act like an acid and the HYO2, the other species, will act like a base. Uh, we then can use Bronsted-Lowry theory to determine what's going to happen. So a Bronsted-Lowry acid will donate its proton over to the base, and our products then are pretty easy to come by. We have XO minus because the HXO has lost or donated its proton to the base, H2YO2. And of course, we could go ahead and then label these with our conjugate acid base by looking at the reverse reactions. Not a bad thing to practice right there. So pretty simple procedure. We ought to be able to do this if we have this data given to us. So let's go back to our initial three reactions that we were looking at. And here is a table with all the equilibrium constants. Now I just got this out of the back of your own textbook. So you can also go back and look at, the, uh, at, at, at this table that's full of all kinds of uh, acids and ions that are uh, acidic. And you can solve problems in the same way. So here we've got the bicarbonate and the bisulfate anions. We look at the two and it's, it's not even a close contest. One is 10 to the minus second, one's 10 to the minus 11th. This bisulfate ion is definitely the stronger, so it will behave as an acid while the bicarbonate will act like a base. And our answer uh, comes out and to H2CO3 and SO4 2 minus. So we get sulfate and carbonic acid in our solution. The second reaction, if you were to go ahead and look at the two data points, they're very simple, similar. One's 10 to the minus first, one's 10 to the minus second. So this um, iodic acid here, this is definitely going to be a stronger acid than the chlorous acid. So the HiO3 will act like an acid, HClO2 will act like a base. That means this guy right here, the HiO3 will donate its proton over and we should then lose charge on this, it should become negative, while the base should gain the proton's charge and become positive. It's exactly what we see happening. So let's look at our last example. Uh, we've got the 
bisulfous acid and this biphosphoric acid in here. These are very similar in the sense that we both got 10 to the minus 8 for our equilibrium constants, but we do see a slight difference, 6.4 versus 6.2. We wouldn't expect this reaction to happen a lot because they are so similarly, similarly strength, but this uh, HSO3 is a little bit stronger, so we would predict it to be the acid, and then the H2PO4 minus would be the base. Therefore, the proton would leave the uh, HSO3 and go to the H2PO4 minus, forming phosphoric acid and the sulfite anion in solution. There you have it. That's how we use equilibrium constants to, to predict the products of acid-base reactions.